بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم عارف اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو آر ٹو دا نیکسٹ سیشن آن دا سبجیکٹ آف سسٹم پروگرامنگ وتھ لینکس دا ٹائٹل آف ٹو ڈے سیشن از یونکس ڈومین ساکٹس دس لائٹ شوز دا ایجنڈا آف ٹو ڈے سیشن Well, students, a socket-based IPC may take place in several domains. The two commonly used are the internet domain and the Unix domain. In the previous two sessions, we talked in length about the internet domain sockets. And under this domain, we talked about the, the, the stream sockets, that is the TCP sockets, as well as the datagram sockets or the UDP sockets. The TCP sockets provide a reliable full duplex stream oriented communication channel with additional features of error detection, flow control and congestion control. UDP sockets provide unreliable full duplex packet oriented communication channel and can be connected as well as unconnected. And of course, we discussed a lot of client server programs as proof of concepts. Let us now uh, switch the domain from the internet domain to the Unix domain. Okay, Unix domain socket is an IPC mechanism using which two or more related or unrelated processes executing on the same machine can communicate with each other. Unix domain sockets are twice as fast as the internet domain TCP sockets. So they are used in communication between a client and server when both are on the same host. Unix domain sockets support both TCP as well as the UDP sockets. Communication is bidirectional with stream sockets and unidirectional with datagram sockets. And the Unix domain datagram sockets are always reliable and don't reorder the datagrams. Well, instead of identifying a server by an IP address and port, a Unix domain socket is known by a path name. And obviously the client and the server have to agree on the path name uh, for them to find each other. For Unix domain sockets, File and directory permissions restrict which processes on the host can open the socket and thus communicate with the server. Therefore, Unix domain sockets provide an advantage over internet sockets to which anyone can connect unless extra authentication logic is implemented. Well, to create a Unix domain socket, as usual, we use the socket system call. This is the code snippet which is used for, for this purpose. Uh, but this time the first argument is af underscore unix instead of af underscore inet. Similarly, the second argument is uh, either sock stream or sock dgram, whatever suits you. The unix domain socket address is different from the internet domain socket address. It uses SOC ADDR underscore UN address structure, having two, two members. First is the son underscore family, which is assigned the value AF underscore Unix or maybe AF underscore local. The second member is son underscore path, which specifies the path name of the socket. Well, this son path member can have a path name it can be unnamed or maybe abstract as well. And for details, you will see the man page of Unix uh, from section 7. Okay, finally, the, uh, the uh, server process bind the socket descriptor with this address uh, uh, using the bind system call. And after this line, uh, the resulting path name of the socket file uh, is visible in the file system as well. And if you run this command ls-l, you, you will see the, the path name with 
the S at the first character. That is, this is a socket uh, special file. And moreover, remember, as shown in this diagram, uh, the Unix domain uh, stream sockets are bidirectional. That is, processes can send and receive data via them. On the contrary, the Unix domain datagram sockets are, are unidirectional. You can only send the information in one direction, as is the case with uh, named pipes. Well, those of you who have taken the video session on the named pipes might be thinking that Unix domain sockets are quite similar uh, to named pipes or FIFOs. So let me compare these two IPC mechanisms as well. Well, this slide gives the comparison between Unix domain sockets and named pipes. The first difference is Unix domain sockets can be created as stream socket for bidirectional as well as datagram socket for unidirectional communication. On the contrary, name pipes are unidirectional only. The second difference is in Unix domain sockets, each client has an independent connection to the server. As server has a separate descriptor for each client. On the contrary, in case of name pipes, many clients may write to the pipe, but the server cannot distinguish the clients from each other, as the server has only one descriptor to read from the name pipe. Therefore, Unix domain sockets should be used if there are multiple clients that need to be uh, distinguishable. And the third difference is about uh, uh, creating an opening. Sockets are created using a socket and assign their identity using uh, the bind system call on the server side, while the name pipes are creating using um, MK54 library call or maybe MK node system call. Uh, to connect to a Unix domain socket, the normal socket and connect calls are used and then the socket descriptor can be read as well as uh, written. Uh, in case of uh, name pipes, a process can uh, open a name pipe and then can either read or maybe write it. And a form of theory, uh, this slide shows a lab setup which is the same as discussed in previous uh, sessions. Uh, but since we are going to work on Unix domain sockets which are uh, local to a machine, so I will be working only on one machine and that will be Kali Linux. Okay, so let us move on to the Kali terminal and see a sample code uh, for, for an eco server and eco client that use a stream or TCP socket for, for bi-directional communication. Okay, let me cd to let me check out the directories the listing. Okay, let me cd to Unix domain TCP first and let me show you the example Unix domain TCP eco server first. Fine. Uh, since this is a TCP server, so we have uh, created two descriptors. Uh, the master or server descriptor uh, for connection establishment and the uh, data or client descriptor for data transfer. Uh, note that the structure is not a SOC ADDR IN, rather it is SOC ADDR UNIX for UNIX. And uh, since the server is responsible for creating the socket file and this file exists even after server process terminates, uh, so we need to, so we need to unlink. So we need to unlink or delete this socket file before creating it again. So socket call is used to create the socket. Note the first argument is AF underscore Unix to create a Unix domain socket and it is a stream socket or TCP socket. Uh, the Unix domain address structure has two members, sun family and sun path. After populating them we call uh, the bind system call uh, to bind the master or server socket with server address. And then uh, rest of the code is uh, uh, the same as discussed in the internet domain TCP socket that is the server uh, listens then accepts uh, where is accept okay here it is and then it accept the incoming connection and create a data or client socket descriptor and then since this is the eco server all the reading and writing is done on this data server on data socket rather. Okay, I think the code is clear and it is making sense. Uh, let me compile this. Unix domain TCP eco server. 
and let me compile it with the name of uh, server and uh, before executing the server let us use the client code as well uh, then unix domain tcb go client.c well since this is a, a client so so we have only one descriptor that is soc ft uh, the client knows the path of the socket file using which it is going to communicate with the server and that is of course in the present working directory populate the address structure and uh, the client then calls connect uh, rest of the code is same as we have seen in the eco client for uh, internet domain tcp socket let me compile this program unix domain tcp eco client.c and let me create the file with the name of client let me run the server program okay the server is running let me move on to the other terminal in the same directory i am right now and let me check out the long listing of uh, unix domain tcp and well yes over here you can see the socket file this is created and let me run the client now over here you can see it is saying the client connection is established uh, well the famous saying learning is fun with rf with capital a this is great so it is working perfectly fine let me close this connection it is saying the client connection is terminated server is still waiting for another connection let me open the connection again and you see it is working as it was working in case of <coughs> excuse me the internet domain sockets <coughs> now let us see a sample code for unix domain udp sockets as well uh, remember they are unidirectional so we cannot write an eco server and eco client program using a uh, unix domain udp sockets let me change the directory to unix domain udp and well yes i have a program unix domain udp receiver.c <coughs> excuse me mm -hmm. okay fine uh, this is the receiver program that will receive a string from sender program and later display it on uh, standard output uh, the receiver program is responsible for creating the socket file as usual and the populate the address structure and then call bind it uh, then uses a rec v from to read uh, the socket descriptor and finally display a welcome message the sender will just send a string and it will receive it and display it on std out so this is a simple program a unidirectional the data will be sent from the receiver to uh, the sender to the receiver program let me compile this unix domain receiver.c hyphen o receiver and before i execute this let me show you the sender code as well okay so this is a sender program and the sender program of course knows the path of the socket file and there is this one uh, of course it will create the socket populate the address structure and then it will just uh, do what it will use send to so it will prompt the user to enter a name it will read the name from uh, standard input that is keyboard and then it will use send to to send this string to the receiver program uh, I hope it makes sense. It's very simple. Let me compile this sender program with the name of sender. And we need to run the receiver first because the receiver is the program which is going to create the, the socket. So let us run the client program as well over here. But it is in the Unix domain.
UDP sockets. Uh, yes, it is here. Let me run it. Dot forward slash sender. The sender will prompt for a name, and my name is Muhammad Arif Bhatt. Remember, the receiver program is running on this terminal, waiting for the sender to send it some data, and here is the data, and here it goes. That is great. Let us fall back to slides. So we are done with this as well. And that is it. Uh, so this is the end of today's session. Today we have seen how to uh, how to do unrelated processes. Executing on same machine can communicate uh, via Unix domain sockets, which can be stream oriented, that is uh, bi-directional and which can be datagram oriented uh, that is unidirectional i hope it was informative for you all if you have liked it please subscribe my youtube channel and share it with your friends happy learning and allah hafiz